Thank you for joining me today for this presentation on John's Gospel. We're in John chapter 11. Tonight, uh, Coach Jake Taylor on the Maywood Facebook page will be talking about this. It'll be at 7 o'clock, and I hope you'll come and join. So let's return to our study of John chapter 11, and we're now at the tomb of Lazarus. Uh, the reading is from John chapter 11, verses 38 through 40. Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there's a stench because he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Look at verse 38. It recalls that Jesus was greatly disturbed. Now think with me. If Jesus was greatly disturbed at Lazarus' tomb, can you imagine his grief at the death of thousands of people with coronavirus? The Bible's very clear. Jesus knows the name of every person on the earth. That includes their hopes, their dreams, their suffering, everything about them. He is grieving right now with all of humanity during this pandemic. But he also grieves over war, poverty, displaced persons, human pride, evil, corruption, and a host of other things that break his heart. Earlier in the chapter, Martha used three titles to describe Jesus as the Messiah. That's in verse 27. Now she's concerned about the stench of her brother's dead body, verse 39. What's up? Where'd your faith go? I'm so thankful that Jesus never requires perfect faith. He tells us in Matthew 17, 20 that mustard-sized faith will do. Listen to Jesus. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. What a great promise. So let's take courage. None of us can complain. None of us can claim perfection. But if we're making progress in our faith, let's make ourselves available to God at this time. Let's stand beside our Savior at the tomb of the world's suffering and join him in his ministry. Coach Jake has been uh, reading the book of James, and I'm following his example in reading it too. If we want to join Jesus in his ministry to the world, we can do like Coach Jake. We can read James and then do what is taught in the book. Simply, let's do this. Let's do everything the book of change, James tells us to do and then look to see the results. Verses 41 and 42 contain a prayer of Jesus. And I'd ask us to think, what can we learn when we listen to Jesus pray? Well, they took away the stone, verse 41. Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. Now, this prayer of Jesus is another example of his complete submission to the Father's will. I've written several times in my blog articles that Jesus' complete submission to the Father is a central theme in John's Gospel. We can believe Jesus because Jesus never did anything out of his own uh, seeking for glory or own arrogance or pride. He was always submitted to the will of the Father. And one of the key verses that describes this is John 5, 19, where Jesus said, uh, Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing on his own, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. John 5, 19. Uh, Jesus never acted apart from the Father. Once again, let's emphasize that. He wanted the crowd of the tomb to know this fact of his life. He wants us to know it. And so if we want to live a Jesus kind of life, we will find ourselves imitating Jesus' submission to the Father's will. Let's today strive to both know and do the will of the Father. Now we're at the tomb, verses 43 and 44. So when he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. Praise God. His hands and feet were brown with strips of cloth. His face was wrapped in a cloth. 
Jesus said, unbind him, let him go. On a book of suffering I read several years back, it said, don't write cheerful graffiti on the tomb of someone suffering. People don't need a lot of talk at their time of suffering. We're better off just doing what Romans 12:15 says, weep with those who weep. If Jesus had written something over Lazarus's tomb, it would have been giant, bold print, Lazarus, come out, and that's what Lazarus did. We do have hope to share with grieving people when they're ready to receive it. We give them hope, but our hope is not a mere hope so. Rather, we have a genuine confidence based in what Jesus has done. Besides what the Bible says about our life after life on earth, we have the experience of the Holy Spirit. The first chapter of 2 Corinthians addresses suffering. Towards the end of the chapter we read, Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and anointed us is God, who has also sealed us and given the Spirit in our hearts as a pledge. So the presence of the Holy Spirit has put God's stamp on us that we belong to God. And our transformed lives are the evidence of the Spirit's presence. The current reality of our life with God through the Holy Spirit is a pledge to us, God says in 2 Corinthians, that heaven is real. So let's turn to what we're going to do with all of this. Uh, as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection power, let's today stand with Jesus beside the tomb of our world's uh, sadness. I ask you today to pray with Beth and others for our Africa. I'm just going to use Beth's first name for security purposes. I asked Beth, who's spoken a few times at Maywood, how I could pray for her friends in Africa. If you don't know Beth, she's a dedicated servant of God who has been bringing God's light and love to countries in Africa. So Beth noted in an email to me that during the current coronavirus lockdown in one country, life is more harsh than normal. People can't store phone, excuse me, can't store food, and they have to dodge robbers and the military when they sneak out to get their daily provision of food. Many live in single room compounds with one carmine charcoal cooking fire. Imagine that. How do you do social distancing when you're doing that? They have only one toilet to share in their compound with all the other people. Running water is limited. Soap is limited. Medical care is virtually non-existent. Now, Jesus, our Savior, knows the name of every person in the area that Beth has described for us. He knows their hurts, their dreams, their fears, their desires. Let's join together with Beth, with each other, and Jesus. I would like you to note that in Hebrews 7.25, Jesus always lives to make intercession. He is somehow praying for those people along with us. Don't know how that happens, but he does it. Let's pray with Beth and Jesus and others for God's light and love and health to be in Africa. If you would please join me in prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you for the privilege of living where we have running water, soap, and face masks. Thank you for such things as food and housing and medical care. Now we turn our attention to the people of Africa. We ask that you have mercy on this continent and spare the lives of people from the coronavirus. Lord, may you work miracles in that region that reveal your character to the world. We thank you and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. And... Uh, Look forward to joining you tonight at 7 o'clock to hear Coach Jake talk about it. Have a great day.